so hello everyone and welcome back once again to the today's session of design of rcc and c structural elements okay so today i am going to deliver a lecture on design of corner for retaining wall so in the last session we have finished with design of cantilever retaining wall okay and today we are going to begin with the design of corner for retaining wall so in the first session i told you what is the difference between the cantilever retaining wall and the corner for retaining wall okay so today <coughs> before proceeding with the design of corner for retaining wall okay i'll explain what are the different types of components we need to design or we need to consider for the design of corner for retaining wall okay so here you can see uh, the 3d view of the corner for retaining wall what you can see okay so basically the corner for retaining wall divides into three components one is the vertical part one is the horizontal part and the inclined part what you can see okay uh, that's why i have divided in the different color this is in white color this is in orange color and this is in yellow color okay so three basic components we need to design here for the design of corner for retaining wall okay so let us explain so the first part what you can see which is in white color which it is called as stem or upright slab it is called as stem or upright slab that is the first component we need to design okay uske baad hai next is base slab it is in orange color what you can see it is a base slab again the base slab divides into two components that is heel slab and toe slab heel slab and toe slab okay and the third one we have that is corner four the yellow color what you can see the inclined part this is called as corner four then what is the difference between cantilever retaining wall and corner four retaining wall so generally what is happen when the height of the retaining wall is more or if it is more than 5 meter or 6 meter so that time what is happen the vertical slab or the stem try to bend or buckle because of the soil pressure so this wall will be subjected to a soil pressure that's horizontal soil pressure so kya hoga the height of the retaining wall is more than 5 meter or 6 meter so or it is more than that so what will happen because of this soil pressure it will try to bend or it will try to buckle okay and that has to be resisted that has to be resisted by providing the additional element which is called as so what will happen this will try to fold the bending of retaining wall this will try to resist the bending of vertical slab or the upright slab or stem so what will happen here by folding this we are going to strengthen that we are going to strengthen the stem even the base slab we are going to strengthen the vertical slab or the stem or even the base slab okay by providing the anchoring between these two and these two the anchorage between the reinforcement between these two and these two we are going to resist the bending or the buckling of retaining wall so that is the reason we have to go for design of corner for retaining wall when the height of the retaining wall is more or if it is more than 5 meter 6 meter or even more than that okay so that time we have to design the additional element which is called as corner for so understood the basic is here it divides into three part that is the stem or the upright slab base slab and corner four here are the three basic components we to design okay so let us start with the problem now okay so the given data we have here hmm? the statement of the problem i give it later or i will mention in the description box okay then you can know now so i have written the only given data okay so we can now the given data here the first is height of the wall So the height of the wall is 5.5 meter above the ground level. This is very important. Height of the wall is 5.5 meter above ground level. So the height of the wall above the ground level is 5.5 meter. Then we have SPC of soil is equal to the SPC that is same bearing capacity of soil. What will happen? So this wall has to support only soil, and thus capacity of the soil is 160 kN per meter square. And then we have the angle of removal of that soil. The angle of internal friction of that soil is pi is equal to 30 degree. Then next we have the density of soil, 16 kN per meter cube. Okay. So what is that one? This retaining wall has to support the soil. This retaining wall has to support the soil, and that soil is having density is 16 kN per meter cube. Okay. And so so this is the kind of thing you want to do. And with respect to this, you want to do to design the corner for retaining. Okay, so in the design part, we have the first step that is very important. That is, first point of contact. What is the depth of foundation? Because this is the height of the retaining. 
I have considered the top projection as 1 fourth of base width. So I got 1.25 and I have rounded up to 1.15. Understood? So these are the basic dimensions. We are fixed with. We are fixed with the basic dimensions. Okay. So he got the total height is 6.3. And the base length is this, this we got it as this we got it as 6 0.4 the thickness of base level is 0.4 the width of base level as 4.5 okay and we have the center to center distance between the contour foot as 3 meter okay now move on to after fixing the dimensions we move on to design part okay we move on to design part we move on to design part okay so the first is here we have first design part is that we are going to go design of design of upright slab or stand. The first element we will design is design of upright slab or stand. Design of upright slab or stand. Okay. So for that we have to find out first of all the intensity of lateral earth pressure over this cell. Okay. So, so we have this right here. Thirty 
as P is equal to 33.6 okay 33.6 kilo newton per meter square okay so we get this element the maximum pressure we will have the base we got as 33.6 kilo newton per meter square okay now considering the bottom one meter deep strip okay so we are going to do we consider the bottom one meter strip deep strip so what are we going to do How the what will be the level of the upright slab? No, this is very important. This is very very important. Okay, what will be what will be the level of the upright slab? How it will bend? How it will bend? Okay, suppose if there were no pump force, if there were no pump force, and the wall being subjected to lateral air pressure because of soil. Okay, because of soil. अगर यहाँ पे पालतू फोर्ट नहीं है, there is no पालतू फोर्ट here, how it will bend, how it will behave, so automatically it will bend like this, it will bend, it will bend like this, understood? The wall will bend like this, it will bend like this, hmm? it will bend like this. If there is no पालतू फोर्ट, अगर यहाँ पे पालतू फोर्ट नहीं है, so because of the soil pressure, because of the soil pressure, the wall will bend like this. Now it is not like It is not like that. The wall is supported by these two pulley forces. The wall is supported by these two pulley forces. So that is what is happening. The behavior of the wall will change. The behavior of the wall will change. Now how it will change? That is very important. The behavior of the wall will change. Now how it will change? Again, this pulley force, the vertical slab, because of the pulley force, it will act as a continuous slab. It will not act as a continuous continuous slab. This Vertical slab on the stem. Vertical slab on the stem will not behave as a continuous slab. It will behave as a continuous slab. <coughs> Because of this, of course. So what will happen? This will just be our. It will bend like this. So I just, just. <coughs> so this will bend like this. This will bend like this. And this will bend. Like this. Can you see? This will bend. It will act as a continuous or it will act as a continuous slab. Can I just show you that I can demonstrate this? It is like supporting like this. Okay, it is supporting like this, and we have the supporting member that is pulley force, and the soil is pressurized. The soil is pressurized. So this will not bend like this because it is fixed. This side, both side, it is fixed. So that is what I am going to bend like this. It will bend. Like this, so that is what will happen. The upright slab will bend like this. This will push back side, and this will be because of the support. It will bend like this. Can you imagine? I'll just so it will bend like this. So this will be pushed back side. So it will bend like this, and it is supported. It will come back. Can it be pushed back side? Can it come back? Can it be pushed back? Can you imagine? This is very important. This will bend like this. This slab will bend like this because of the supports here. This will bend like this, like this. It will bend like this. Hmm. So because of that, it is it will act as a continuous slab. It will not behave as a continuous slab. It will behave as a continuous slab because of these supports. These supports. Understood? Okay. So for that, considering the one meter strip, considering the one meter strip, one meter bottom strip. So you have to consider the one meter bottom strip here. One meter bottom strip. So this one meter bottom strip you have to consider because this is like the building is level. So you have to consider this one meter strip bottom strip. So this one meter strip you have to consider. Considering one meter bottom strip, you have to find out the bending point. Hmm? And uh, for bending point, which load you have to consider? The load is this. It is nothing but pressure of the load acting on the base of the. Reading wall, and by considering one meter bottom strip, it was what was considered as a continuous slab. So width of the slab will be one meter. Okay. So considering the bottom one meter strip, considering the bottom one meter strip, you have to find out the bending point. Okay. So the M will be okay. One meter strip. The maximum bending point for this strip. Now considering the one meter bottom strip, considering one meter bottom strip. By considering, okay, one meter bottom strip, okay, 
considering one meter water strip, the maximum bending moment the maximum bending moment the maximum bending will be m will be it will be p into l square by 12 p into l square by 12 so why should be p l square by 12 why should be p l square by 12 p l square by 12 so let us consider a continuous lab with supports So this is supporting a load. So what is the bending behavior? What will be the behavior of bending here? So it will be like this. Correct. Correct. So we get positive bending moment and negative bending moment both. Positive, that is sagging. Negative at support that is hugging, correct? Positive that is sagging at mid span. Negative that is hugging at support. Okay. So here we get the maximum value as W S square by 12. Okay. So this will be. So this will be. What will be this? It will be P L square by 24. And this will be P L square by 12. Correct? At support we have the maximum bending moment because support we try to attract the bending moment. So at support P L square by 12 at this time we have P L square by 24. The maximum is P L square by 12. We can consider 24 also, but the maximum in this case is P L square by 12. So we have to consider the bending moment as W L square by 12. So W is the moment here, our pressure. I have replaced with P. W I have replaced with P. So W is the moment P P L square by 8. 12. It is not P L square by 8 here. It is not simply supported. It is continuous. So at support we get P L square by 12. At mid span we get P L square by 24. So out of these two we have to consider the maximum. The maximum is P L square by 12. So we got the moment as P L square by 12. So P is the moment here. Our pressure is 33.56. 33.56. We put L is 3 meter divided by 12. Why is it 3 meter? Because the center to center distance between the supports are about 4 is 3 meter. So that's what it is. P L square by 12. Okay, P L square by 12. So we get this as we get this as 25.25.17 25 kilo newton meter. 25.17 <coughs> kilo newton meter. So therefore, the factor bending moment M U will be by multiplying 1.5 factor. This bending moment we get this as 37.37.75 kilo newton meter. So this is the maximum bending moment acting over the upright slab because of the soil earth pressure. So that is 37.75 kilo newton per meter square. Now by equating this, by equating this to M U limit, we have to find out what should be the Thickness of upright slab. What should be the thickness of upright slab? Okay. So I write like here. I am equating. Okay. So by equating, by equating, by equating, M U is equal to M U limit. By equating, M U is equal to M U limit. So M U we have already thirty three point thirty seven point just we have already did thirty seven point seven five into ten to six thirty seven point seven five into ten to six and M U limit for M U T grade of concrete and M U for facility is point one three eight F C K B D square point one three eight F C K B D square okay. So we have got F C K is 20. B is you have to consider one meter strip. Hmm? Okay, so I'll substitute here 0.138 F C K is 20. B is 
thousand anterior fibre. That is the thickness of slab or the depth of slab. It is vertical slab. So by this we get D is equal to by this we get D is equal to. So calculate it. So we get this as one one six point nine five. We get this as one one six point nine five. We get this as one one six point nine five. Okay. So I round off to one twenty. I round off to one twenty. Okay. So by assuming fifty mm again cover fifty mm effective cover. Okay. So therefore the total depth. The total depth by considering the cover of fifty mm. So we get this as one seventy. We get this as one seventy. Correct. We get this as one seventy. Sorry. Again. I round off to this value. I round off to two hundred mm. So total depth. So how about by considering fifty mm the cover? So one seventy mm. So let us round off to two hundred mm. So therefore, D will be one fifty mm. So the D, the depth of the effective depth and the total depth. So this will be zero point two. Okay. This will be. This is this. This will be two hundred. This will be two hundred. Okay. This will be point two or two hundred. Understood? So this is regarding the thickness of base. Now we will calculate the area of sheet required. Okay. The area of sheet required. So I will draw for this here now. Okay. So here again you have to find out the spacing, okay? Because you have to find the spacing. 
expressing will be area of bar so that is pi by 4 into 12 square divided by ht is 781 point 53 into b is 1000 okay so we get this as 144.7 